that first Sunday when John Wright came calling, I was almost 20 years old and practically a spinster. I thought him very handsome and able. He had come only a short time before from Illinois and already had a homestead with a house on it. He said straight away that he had come to church to find a good Christian woman to marry. And he saw me in the choir wearing my Easter dress, the white one with the blue ribbons. He said he loved my singing. What a man tells a girl he's courting does not always endure. It was not until we dragged my hope chest over the threshold that I realized you couldn't see the road from the kitchen window. There was a chill in those rooms that had nothing to do with night coming on. In his haste, John Wright tore my new silk petticoat, one I had made myself and was very proud of. The doctor said that I might need months of bed rest to bring a baby to term. What farm wife can spend that long off her feet? Still, John Wright remained attentive, called me his little bird, said we'd try again, and we did. For a time, he chopped the kindling, he hold the water. But we lost the babies anyway. So after that, we lay side by side without touching. And the space between us grew hard and silent. It was then that John Wright began to say that he couldn't stand any noise in the house, that he could not tolerate my singing, that I was not to speak unless I'd been spoken to and he used the back of his hand to prove that he meant what he said. When we married, my husband said that we would be church going people. But in time, he took to leaving me at the ladies' aid meeting to escort a young widow home to her stepson's house. One time, I slipped out of the ladies' aid meeting to speak to the minister. I told him about the silence in our house, enforced by John's right hand, the lack of relations between us and my husband's attentions to the widow. And he told me to keep my sorrows to myself and to speak no more against my husband. When I came out of the preacher's office, John Wright was standing in the hallway. The whole way home, he berated me for being alone with another man. When we drew into the yard, I told him he was slandering me and giving, giving his attention to the widow. He was being a, a hypocrite in, as well. And he struck me with the butt of the buggy whip and he pushed me out of the wagon. And that was the last time I asked my husband to take me to church.